Welcome back to our Sailrite workbench. Today, based on many comments that we got suggesting some DIY backpacking or camping gear, we're gonna be making a fanny pack. This bag will be perfect for hiking, biking, traveling, and any other adventure that you can think of. We have a template in the description below that you can print off and follow along to make your own fanny pack. The template is gonna print off to scale and it's gonna be five pages. So each piece will be labeled with the piece that it is, the fabric or fabrics that you should be using, and the amount of pieces that you're gonna to need to cut out of it. To get started, we're gonna show you the tools and materials that you'll need to do this project, and then we'll jump into the project. We are gonna be using three different colors of Cordura fabric. Cordura fabric is highly water and abrasion resistant, which is why it makes it great for bag material. So we went ahead and got a yard of each color that we wanna use. So for our uses, the teal fabric is gonna be fabric A, the burgundy fabric is gonna be fabric B, the yellow fabric is gonna be fabric C. The second type of fabric that we have here is a yard of soft touch fabric. This fabric has two sides. One side is an acrylic coated polyester fabric that is highly water resistant and durable. The other side has a soft lining similar to felt. This fabric will be used for the back of the fanny pack to add structure and some cushion, which will make for a more comfortable bag to wear. So this is gonna be our fabric D. So we're gonna be using a one inch polyester webbing for the straps because it's strong and doesn't stretch much, plus it's smooth to the touch, which makes it perfect for bag making. So we have approximately five feet of this webbing, but you might need a little more or a little less depending on the size you want your straps to be. The second type of webbing that you're gonna need is a 3 4 inch grow grain webbing. This webbing is gonna be used for the inside of the bag to bind the edges so that the edges won't fray. We're gonna be using about eight feet of this webbing. Then we have three feet of 1 8 inch shock cord that's gonna go across the front and a cord closure for the end. Lastly, we have two feet of Linzip number five continuous coil zipper chain, two Linzip number five single non-locking zipper pulls, two zipper pull tabs, and a one inch buckle. Now onto our tools for the project. First, we will be using the Ultrafeed LS sewing machine to sew our project. We will also be using both the Ultrafeed bag making and speed reduction upgrade kits for all the necessary accessories that we're gonna need to make this project. From the bag making kit, we're gonna be using the quarter inch basting tape, the size 18 needle, the V69 black thread, the thread snips, and the fabric clips. We will also be using our cordless hot knife and cutting glass to cut and seal our fabric and webbing to avoid any fraying. You will also need some fabric scissors and a patterning tool. We're gonna to be using this chalk pencil set because it has various colors that we can use on our various material colors. The first step of this project is to print the pattern and cut it out. Next, trace the pattern onto your selected fabric. We are going to loosely cut around each fabric except the soft touch. Go ahead and use your scissors to fully cut out that fabric. Then bring the Cordura fabric over to the cutting glass and cut it out with the hot knife. Don't forget to mark where the webbing loops will go and cut out the section where the top zipper will go. The next step is to assemble the front pocket of the bag. Start by cutting six pieces of two inch Grogrian webbing using our tempered cutting glass and hot knife. These are gonna be used as loops to hold the cord on the front of our bag. Then fold and clip them to the front on the designated marks. Now 
Now sew them into place. We recommend back stitching to reinforce the seam. Now thread your zipper and cut it down to nine inches. Use basting tape to secure the front piece to the bottom edge of the zipper and sew it into place with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then flip it and place a top stitch with an eighth inch seam allowance. We are not gonna be sewing over the webbing loops, so you can just pull those out of the way when you get to them. Using basting tape, secure the back of the front pocket to the opposite side of the zipper. Sew it with a quarter inch seam allowance and then flip it and add an eighth inch top stitch. With our front pocket mostly assembled, we're gonna move on to the sides of our bag. Cut two pieces of one inch webbing that are four and a half inches long. Clip the webbing strips in the middle of the side pieces. Sew them into place, back stitching over the webbing length to reinforce the seam. You can choose to have one loop or two. We're going to be doing one of each on our bag so that you can see what they look like. Bring the sides over to the front pocket and clip them into place with the narrower end of the side attaching to the front. First, flip the back of the front pocket into place and clip it together. Then line up the side pieces on the pocket. There will be a little bit of overhang, so you'll want to line these side pieces up in the middle. Sew it together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now we're going to add some binding to the edges. Measure the side edges and then cut your binding to size. Use basting tape to secure the binding on one side. Bring it over to the sewing machine and fold the binding over the edges and sew it into place. Lastly, flip it over and top stitch with an eighth inch seam allowance. Next, we need to assemble the top of our bag. Attach a zipper pull to the remaining zipper and cut it down to nine and a half inches. Now we're gonna attach our zipper to the two top pieces. You'll wanna make sure that you have both your front pocket zipper and this zipper running the same direction on the bag. Use basting tape to secure the top pieces to either side of the zipper. Sew the first piece into place with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then flip it and add an eighth inch top stitch. Now you can attach the second top piece to the zipper, sewing it into place with a quarter inch seam allowance and then adding the eighth inch top stitch. With the top piece finished, we'll continue assembling our bag. Clip the top and bottom pieces to the front pocket piece and sew it together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then bind the edges with grosgrain webbing. Lastly, top stitch with an eighth inch seam allowance.
At this point, you can go ahead and cut the excess zipper on either end at the angle to match the fabric. Now we are gonna repeat the same steps to sew the sides to the top and bottom. Clip them together, sew it into place, add binding to the edges, And top stitch. Next, you can set our assembled pieces to the side and pull out our one inch webbing. Cut two pieces of webbing, one that is 20 inches long and another that is 30 inches long. Now for the 30 inch long piece of webbing, you may want a little bit more or a little bit less depending on how long you want your shots to be. Loop the shorter piece through the buckle. Then clip the ends of that piece in between the two fabrics of the side attachment pieces. You will want the wrong sides of both materials to be sticking out. You'll wanna make sure that the front side of the buckle, so the side that doesn't have any markings, is on the same side as the burgundy fabric like so. Then place one end of the longer piece of webbing in between the second set of side attachment pieces. Again, assure that both fabrics have the wrong side facing out. Then bring both pieces over to the sewing machine and sew around the edges with a quarter inch seam allowance. When you sew over the webbing straps, backstitch over them to reinforce this seam. Once one has been sewn, cut off the corners and flip it right side out. Cutting the corners will just reduce bulk in those areas. Then top stitch around the edge with an eighth inch seam allowance. Repeat these steps on the second strap. Then layer the two back panel pieces with the wrong sides facing each other. Then clip the strap attachments to the back panels with the thicker fabric sides facing each other. We are placing our straps one inch down from the top edge. Sew these pieces together with a quarter inch seam allowance. The last step of this project is to assemble the back piece with the rest of the bag. Start by unzipping the main zipper pocket. This will allow you to turn the project right side out when you're done sewing it. Clip the back panel piece to the rest of the bag with the wrong sides facing out. Sew around the perimeter with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then add binding to the edges. Once binding is added, flip the bag right side out and pull the corners out. Now add the mating buckle piece to the longer strap. Weave the webbing in and out of the buckle like so and sew the end down so it doesn't come out of the buckle. We're also gonna add a stitch right under the other buckle just to make sure that it doesn't slide around as you use it. Now weave the shock cord through the front loops. Then wrap the end in masking tape and use the hot knife to cut and seal the end. Then use the cord stoppers to secure the ends. Lastly, loop the zipper pull tabs through the zippers. Now you have your own DIY fanny pack. All that is left is to style the bag how you want it. We've linked all the tools and materials that we use to make this project in the description below, so make sure to check those out. And thank you guys so much for this video suggestion. If you have any more, you can always leave those in the comments below. 
And lastly, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel and press the notification bell so that you can be the first to see our latest videos. See you guys next time.